Okay, so in this video, we're going to do an example of a strong acid, strong base titration. Um, and we'll start with this definition of the leveling effect, which says that for aqueous solutions, right, where water is the solvent, um, no acid stronger than the conjugate acid of water or stronger than hydronium can exist in water. So when you throw a strong acid in there, that strong acid such as HCl in this example is going to react irreversibly with water because of its large, large Ka value and give one hydronium for every one HCl. Okay. Um, this also applies to strong bases. Okay. So no base stronger than hydroxide. can exist in aqueous solvent. Otherwise that super strong base uh, would just deprotonate the water molecule, water's in excess and generate hydroxide. Okay. So we represent this dissociation of a strong base like barium hydroxide forming barium two plus and two hydroxide ions, right? There's a molecular formula unit two here for every one barium atom. So in this problem, determining the pH, right, we have a mixture of 100 mils from one solution and 50 mils from another solution. And whenever you're mixing volumes, that means increase in volume will lead to a decrease in molarity. Or the molarity is 0.1 and point two will change. They are no longer reliable for you. It is best to work these problems in moles or millimoles. Moles and millimoles will not lie upon volume change. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is set up an ICF table. And whenever you have ICF, from these one-way arrows, initial change final, not so much initial change equilibrium, you should work in moles or millimoles. So setting up the reaction and then determining the appropriate table are the first two key steps in correctly solving any acid-base problem and associate this one-way arrow with ICF, not ICE, and then moles or millimoles. So to calculate the millimoles of HCl, it's going to be the volume, 100 milliliters, multiplied by the molarity, 0.1 molar. And this gives 10 millimoles. Finally, to calculate the millimoles of barium hydroxide, we say it's 50 mils times twice the concentration of HCl. So it gives the same number of millimoles. So these each start at 10 millimoles. And they're going to react to completion. Water's in excess. After all 10 millimoles run out, there'll be none of the strong acid or base remaining. That's what the leveling effect says. Okay. Um, so then chloride and barium are conjugates, right? And they are so weak that we call them neutral ions. They are too weak of acids or bases to affect anything. So these neutral ions are going to be ignored in pH calculations, right? They cannot take a proton back like chloride. It's not going to take hydroxide back. Uh, in other words, these are one-way arrows. For every one HCl, we make one hydronium, so you're left with 10 millimoles of hydronium. For every one barium, we make 
two hydroxide. So be careful about those alkaline earth metals. When they're paired with hydroxide, you have to multiply that stoichiometry by two in the products. So you actually make 20 millimoles of hydroxide. So now we can apply one more reaction to find the pH. So let me make some room here. Here we go. So now to determine the pH, we have hydroxide and every one hydroxide will react with one hydronium. Okay, this reaction is also irreversible because hydroxide is a strong base and hydronium is a strong acid. In a later video, we'll find out that the equilibrium constant for this is 10 to the positive 14. That's why it's so product favored or irreversible. There's a very small arrow in the backwards direction. So if you plug in the amounts that we have remaining, there's 10 millimoles of hydronium from the strong acid. And we also have 20 millimoles of hydroxide from the strong base. Hydroxide takes a hydrogen from hydronium and makes two water molecules. These are force or liquids. Okay. So this reaction is going to run until the limiting reactant, hydronium, runs out. And you're left with 10 millimoles. of hydroxide and 20 millimoles of water. Now water is the solvent, right? It's not going to affect the pH. 10 millimoles of excess hydroxide is going to cause there to be a basic pH, right? So we know the pH for this solution should be greater than seven. However, when you're solving for pH, you must get pOH first, right? And that's equal to the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. These brackets indicate that it's molarity though, right? It is the moles relative to the volume, right? Or the concentration that matters, not so much the absolute amount of grams or moles. It's relative to the space that it occupies. So in other words, we've got to find the molarity again before we plug into the POH equation. And the molarity is 10 millimoles of hydroxide per the total volume we mixed 150 together. And that is now one aqueous solution that is homogeneous and inseparable. So you add the volumes when you're doing a titration. Notice that millimoles will cancel with milliliters to give moles per liter. And this is gonna be negative log of 10 over 50 or 150. In other words, negative log of 1 15th. And that's going to give 1.18. Finally, the pH and the pOH add to 14. So pH is equal to 14 minus 1.18 or 12.82, a highly basic pH, which is what we anticipated with having excess strong base hydroxide. Okay. So uh, for more practice with strong acid, strong base titrations, uh, you can visit Unit 1 of my analytical course guide at chemguides.com, uh, or you can visit Unit 2 in the acid-base section of my general chemistry course guide at chemguides.com.